Okay, I'm just going to quickly talk through the notebook that I've um, added to um, to this week's repository with a kind of quick walkthrough of the an example on the California data um, that we started at the end of class. So um, to begin, I just load the data, create a little plot of the um, of the information based on the latitude and longitude, color the points by the median house value, and make the size based on the population divided by 100. Because if you make it just based on the population size, they're going to be really big. Um, so it's just a way to scale it in. And you see the densely populated areas that have high uh, home values in northern and southern California. Um, we can look at the relationship, uh, the distributions of the different features. And as you see, we're going to have to scale these things. Um, and then I go ahead and I split the data, but right before I split the data, I create a couple features. Um, I, I create my Y and my X. My, I'm, the thing I'm trying to predict here is the median house value. And so then I just drop that guy from, um, from my original data set. And then I also had to replace those missing values in the total bedrooms, and I do that with the median uh, of that column here. And I create three new columns, the rooms per house, bedrooms per room, uh, population per household, before then splitting the, uh, the data set. Next, I look at the relationships between these variables, uh, take a peek at some of the scatter, uh, scatter matrix with some of them, and develop just a very basic linear model using only what appears to be the most uh, the strongly correlated variable here, the median income. So if we just form a linear model using median income against median house value, we get a, a root mean square error of 83,879. We'd like to be able to do better because if we think about this in context of the problem, uh, we're only talking about houses, housing values that are a couple hundred thousand dollars. So this is a fairly substantial error. Hopefully we can improve upon it. Um, one way to do so is to consider more features and to, uh, to also handle this categorical feature, ocean proximity. So like we did before, we can get the dummy variables for that, pop them together, um, and then drop one of them uh, in the issue it, just to watch out for collinearity. Because after we add those dummy variables and join the to our original data frame, we have all of them. And remember, if we have a row that sums to 1, which these will if we all include them. That introduces the possibility for some collinearity. So we drop that, and now we have everything that we want, except we still have that ocean proximity variable here because um, we haven't dropped that yet. So we just tacked on the dummy variables that we created based on it. We want to drop that because we only need to feed numerical features in. So we drop that, and then we have a purely numerical uh, data set that we're dealing with. We create our X and Y's. And uh, next, create a pipeline that both scales it, uh, scales our data, and creates some polynomial features. We talked about adding polynomial features to improve it. So I just added degree two. You can, when you're playing around with a notebook, you can feel free to add uh, higher degree polynomials. It'll just take a little while to, uh, to process. Um, and after I create that pipeline that does that, I go ahead and create a data set based on that transformation. All right, this is an important part. This scales and adds those polynomial features. So then I'm going to fit this data, this housing prepa uh, prepared data. Uh, so first, let's go ahead and use just a, the linear regression model again and see how we've done. And we've improved... We've improved our score by uh, over $20,000, which is nice. Um, next, we can cruise through some of the other regularized models. Uh, and with that, the tuning parameter searches. 
using cross-validation. Um, so when we run through with Lasso, um, we get a root mean square of 60,816. ElasticNet doesn't uh, perform as well and if we want we can check this against the um, the test set finally after we built our model let's say that we want to use um, the elastic net on the this one on the uh, the test set well that gives us root mean square of 71,519 there whereas the lasso uh, gives us 67 and the linear model that we didn't do any cross validation on um, gives us 675 so that ends up being the best um, with the with the polynomial features and you know we were able to improve the root mean square by about 20,000 with just some some simple tuning and uh, the addition of a couple of other features